Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be chatting about my 2023 Project Pan finale. Woo! I am so excited to talk about this with you guys, to film this, to get it all ready to go so that I can get rid of some of this trash, aka my empties. I'm also just ready to close out all of the things involved with 2023 so that I can get on to my 2024 uh, project panning goals and content. So yeah, very excited to film this video. We'll be chatting about my uh, end of the year project pan and pan over purchase and then just some general reflection thoughts. I'm not going to update my 2024 PTP in this update just because you'll be seeing it soon in my 2024 project pan intro video. So that being said, if you enjoy project panning, welcome. My name is Megan. I'm a project panner. I love makeup. I love to use up what I have and use what I have. So if you enjoy that kind of content, be sure to subscribe. Also like the video if you enjoy it. And then I will list my project panning playlist below if you want to continue to check that out. Every year I do start a new playlist for project pans and then I compile the ones from the year before into a general playlist. So that's where this is now going to be located. That being said, let's, I'm going to just stop rambling and let's hop in. Okay. So I will be inserting some like photos and uh, stats and things like that. So there will be actively items up in the, up in the area here, just for you. Anyways, um, I just want to go ahead and start with the project pan update because I think that'll be like the most like cut and dry to the point kind of situation every well for the past like three years i've done an end of the year project pan just to focus on some items that i really want to finish up by the end of the year i go through my collection and i pick and choose what i think i could potentially finish and i compile a list and then that is my end of the year project pan and i work on it for approximately two to three months depending on when i decide to get everything around when i started this project i have one two three four five six seven eight I had eight products in here when I started and during the last update, which I'll link below if you wanna check that out, I was able to finish up the Milani lip oil and then I was also able to finish up the one size primer. I did have to declutter an item and that was the Fenty Beauty Hydrating Liquid Foundation. I also recently uploaded a declutter video that I'll link below as well if you want to see my last declutter of 2023. But that product was, made an appearance on that video. <laughs> so I had one, two, three, four, five. I had five products left that I wanted to try and finish during the month of December. So let's jump into it and see how I did. The first product is the Pure Lease Perfect Glow BB Cream with SPF 30. When you saw this last, we were at this line here and I was discussing that I was like really worried I was not going to be able to completely finish this product up just because it felt like it was never ending. I was using it all the time. We were barely seeing any movement. I was hopeful there would be an air bubble in it to help me get to the end. And there was not one, but two air bubbles. So once it was going, it was gone. Like I went through it like... So I was able to finish up this product, which was really exciting. I heavily enjoyed it. It's one that I would actually reconsider purchasing. I have the shade light and this is quite literally like one of the best shade matches that I have ever used. So I really love this, highly recommend it. Would definitely repurchase it, but I am very excited that it is gone. Next up, I have the Essence uh, Soft and Precise Eyeliner, or eyeliner, geez, uh, lip liner. This one was the shade My Choice. I really like this and these are really just nice. They're wooden, they're sharpenable. They, I feel like I kind of went through them a little bit quicker than other liners before, but they're like literally $3. So I don't really care about that. It's a really nice light pink tone. It's like a My Lips But Better kind of situation, which I really enjoyed. It was firm, but not too firm, but also not like, lipstick soft these are really great liners especially if you're looking for a really affordable option which i was because i don't use lip liners super frequently but i love having them for when i want to reach for one and this was a really affordable item and i was able to finish it up so whoop, 
Next up, the MAC Glow Play Blush. This I for sure knew going into December I was going to be able to finish it because yeah, I was moving through it, especially once I started like pressing the product to the middle so that I could more easily use it. I was able to go through this like fairly quickly toward the end. I feel like these take a long time to see that progress, but once you see it, uh, it really starts moving. I love this. It's the matte glow play blush in the shade. It's so natural. Can't remember if I said that, but I love this product. The formula is really unique in my opinion. It's like a play doughy, very flexible. It gives you like a more of a matte dry down with a sheen in the finish. Really, really beautiful. I have another one of these that I am currently working on as it's like one of the oldest blushes in my collection. I would highly recommend this formula, especially like if you are wanting to try creams or you're a beginner to creams. This is a super friendly one and especially in this shade, like you cannot mess it up, you cannot. So I highly recommend this, love it, would definitely repurchase this formula and this like shade. There's just some others I wanna work through first, but yeah, I was really happy to be able to wrap this up. The product I was not able to wrap up and is gonna be rolling over into the 2024 year is the freaking Dior Lip Glow Oil. Mm. I just, I'm gonna insert pictures so you'll be able to better see where it's actually at. But this month, at least the, you can tell that I used it. You can tell. There was a nice like move in the line. So I was happy about that because from uh, October to November and even like into December, it looked like I hadn't even used it and I was using it actively. So to even see that there was any kind of movement this month brought me joy. This will be moving into 2024 with me. And at the rate that it goes, I will probably have it until at least February or March. It just, I don't know what it is, but it's taking forever to finish. And it's like, not that it's bad. It's just that the packaging is so messy that I can't stand it. Like it leaks and I have it sitting up straight on my desk. Like I don't even have it laying down and it leaks. So I can't even imagine if it was laying down and I just, that annoys me. So I wouldn't recommend it or repurchase it, but yeah, wasn't quite able to wrap this product up, but it's close. All right, the last product that was literally down to the wire. I finished this with two days to spare. It is the Makeup by Mario, if I can open it. Jesus, Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer in the shade Light Medium. Whoa! I'm so excited. At the end of November slash beginning of December, I had repressed this product into a different compact. And I was kind of worried because it looked like I was like, oh, there might be a lot of this left. I don't know if I'll finish it. No, no, no problem. No problem. I didn't even wear makeup every day and I was still able to wrap it up. This product in itself is really beautiful. It is, in my opinion, a very beginner-friendly beginner bronzer. You can build it up, you can sheer it out. It looks very natural on the skin. The tone, in my opinion, is beautiful. This is just so easy to work with and looks so good. Hands down, one of my favorite bronzers that I have ever tried. I just really enjoy it. Uh, and I was very happy to finish it up since it was like, my most used slash, you know, almost gone. So I'm pumped to have worked it on out of my collection. Overall, I think that my end of the year project pan was very success successful. I was able to empty six out of the eight products I selected, decluttered one and was unable to finish one. When I started this, I was like, un like my goal was to just at least hit half. So I'm very pleased with the outcome and I love that I was able to accomplish that and go into the new year, which is like, you know, a few products lighter. So yeah, love that. Next up, we are gonna be ch uh, chatting about my and Steph's project. It's called Pan Over Purchase. Uh, if you're new here, I'll insert the slides, but essentially this is a really low buy. So if you're someone who is wanting to participate in a low buy, then this project might be for you. Steph and I have been doing it. This is the second year we did it and we are doing it in 2024. So it'll be our third year uh, participating in the project that we created. 
But yeah, it was another, in my opinion, really successful year. I previously was very, um, I was consuming a lot of makeup at a rapid rate and it was just like kind of overwhelming, expensive as we all know, and it's getting more expensive. And I really like wanted to cut back my spending habits, but was struggling with how to find the balance because low buys and no buys had not been successful for me in the past. So we were trying to brainstorm a way that to make it, you know, a little give and a little take. And I feel like this project really just has changed my whole collection, but my entire mindset when it comes to the consumption of like my makeup and my purchasing habits. And, you know, it's not something that was easy right off the bat. It's something that took a lot of work. And I think that especially through year number two is when I really saw the most substantial change in my purchasing habits. Year one was hard. It was a struggle. I tried my best. It was successful. Um, but it, I didn't, uh, it wasn't as good as I felt like this year was in terms of like my numbers, um, with like purchasing and my temptations and whatnot. So I was really, really satisfied with how this year came out and it has me even more excited to do it again in 2024. But anyways, I digress. I ended the year in December with two new pans and eight empties, which led me to a total of 10 points in the month of December. So this, how this project works, you guys, if you're new here, is that every time you hit pan or you empty a product that counts as a point, you need 25 points to purchase a new makeup item that is not a replacement. So for me, or you know, anyone who, wants to be on a low buy, this is great for that. Even like you have to be very serious about the low buy because this year, you guys, I only earned, how many purchases did I earn this year? I think I only, oh, here, I have the freaking number right here. I only earned two purchases this year. So while, you know, if you read the disclaimers and whatnot, like if you get a gift card that doesn't count, cash back from Ulta doesn't count, stuff like that does not count toward a purchase. But any kind of money you're spending on a product, you have to earn the purchase to do it. And so I only earned two of those this year. And the thing is, like, it seems hard and it is hard, especially the first year. But this year, it was so much easier. I found my whole mindset had changed and I was craving less new makeup than I was before because I had already begun curbing and changing those spending habits so this year there was not nearly as much temptation or struggle as there was last year and it really just altered my perception to you know how long it takes to pan items how long it takes to empty items you know how am i even working through my collection what do i love what do i not love like it really just i know i'm like rambling but it it just has completely changed my mindset and my consumption habits when it comes to makeup. And I'm really just like grateful for it because something needed to change and it was very helpful. That being said, my yearly pans this year was 26. And this I think is lower than last year. I would have to go back and look, but I'm not really mad because I feel like over the past two years on this project, I have, just been able to more love on my collection equally. Like I'm still a panner and I still pan and focus on items, but I'm able to more easily rotate through what I have and use things more equally instead of just like hyper focusing on a few products. Um, so that, I mean, I'm still happy with that. 26 pans is a lot of pans. I had 40 empties. So I emptied 40 makeup products throughout the year, which I'm also very happy about. I had a lot of big product empties this year, which I have uploaded. I, I don't know if it's gone up yet, but I will link it below. But in my December empties or my last empties of 2023, I go through like October, November, and December. And in the end of that video, I discuss the some of the bigger categories like blush, highlight, foundation, and how many of those I was able to empty throughout the year. And I really just enjoyed doing that because it 
helped me to see like, okay, I emptied five foundations this year. Like, wow. When you look back out of it, back at it, that felt really, I felt really accomplished about that. So I, I think empties are huge. I love emptying makeup and it takes a lot of time and dedication. So it's very satisfying. My yearly total was 66 points, which like I said, means I only earned two purchases this year. The one purchase, I uh, bought the Natasha Denona Love Face Palette and I hated it, which was really upsetting because I did not get that many purchases this year and so to hate one of them sucked. The other purchase I actually just recently used at the very tail end of the year. I made the purchase, I think it was on December 30th or 31st. I was really up in the air about even using the purchase because of my declutter video and I was just like, oh my God. But it, um, I'm gonna be getting a new palette in my collection that a friend got me. And I think this product would pair really nice with that. So I used my purchase to pick that up. You guys will see it soon. I'm gonna do a get ready with me in a tutorial with it. So you'll see it soon. I did spend my last uh, purchase though. And then I had like some separate rules in the slide here. And these are things that Steph and I only just implemented in 2023. We started this project in uh, 2022, just FYI. But we implemented this and I really loved it because these are additional rules tailored to your personal collection because our rules on repurchasing is fairly vague. Like it's kind of up to you and your comfort level and what you want to do with your collection, etc. So we decided we wanted some more strict rules on our collection and what we wanted to bring in because we just really wanted to crack down on what we were trying to do. And I was able to stick to all of those. Examples were only bringing in two, two new eyeshadow palettes that I would have like purchased on my own or whatever. Um, I was able to stick to that and then, well not even purchase, purchase or even got with like points or whatever. Like my limit was two new eyeshadow palettes that I personally brought into my collection. Now they were given or gifted to me ones that I specifically selected and brought in. Um, so I was able to stick to that. And then like, you know, with lippies, I think it was like two out one in bronzers, two out one in, uh, wishlist swaps. I would allowed, was allowed four. I only used one of them, which was like, honestly, I was really proud cause I figured I would, you know, use all of those and I didn't even come close. So overall, like this year was just really beneficial to me and my spending habits and to my collection because I was really just able to curate this year. Um, 2022 was a big, big declutter year of like, oh, I don't like this, I don't enjoy this, like really trying to narrow down my collection. And then this year was very honed in curation, finishing products, rotating them out of my collection that way. Um, and then we had the, you know, fiasco of all the declutter or all of the like decluttering expired makeup in 2023. I had a lot of expired stuff, which was sad, but all the more reason to participate in this project. So I'm not bringing in as much makeup, which is just like, so honestly, so refreshing. And like once I feel like once I've gotten like really comfortable in this and in this mindset, it's been a lot easier to keep up. I'm not saying that I don't ever feel weak or I don't feel tempted uh, because I do. I just not as like frequently anymore, which is really nice. I'm more interested in what I already have than what is being released. And I really enjoy being in that place. So yeah, I, I loved, you know, pan over purchase this year. I thought it was successful. I loved my project pan. I was doing an OG project pan earlier in the year as well. And I emptied some products with that too. If you're new here, you'll notice my project panning really just like evolves throughout the year. Sometimes I quit projects. Sometimes I add projects. Like you're allowed to, it's your collection. It's whatever. Like you can quit or join a project at any time. So I, I do that. I take that in stride. If I'm not enjoying it, I'm outie. 
So yeah, I just, I feel really good about this year in terms of like numbers. I recently completed my inventory for the end of 2023. If you're curious as to what I have, that is up on a highlight on my Instagram page, on my profile. And wow, my numbers are just so refreshing compared to what they were even just last year in 2022. Um, well, yeah, the year before in 2022, but also like in 21 and 20, like it just, yeah, really have loved this experience. So that's just kind of why I wanted to chat about it. But like I said, in 2024, Steph and I will be doing pan over purchase again. Our Instagram post uh, regarding this is going to go up like in the middle of January, but my project panning for 2024 intro video probably won't go up until closer to the end of January. If I had to guess, I'm just like behind, but yeah. And in there I'll go through like all the intricate rules and disclaimers. Like there aren't a lot of rules. It's like literally like three. So it's a very low maintenance project in terms of like keeping up, but it is a very like serious project. Like if you seriously want to do a low buy, then it's for you. If you don't, that's fine. It's not for you. That's okay. But yeah, I think I have rambled enough. I'm just, you know, really excited about this year uh, where 2023 has taken me. And I'm really excited about the new year and to just continue to see how my um, consumption habits continue to evolve and get better. And, you know, hopefully I'll continue to just like create a little bit less waste but no shade to anyone who has a lot of makeup or enjoys collecting it and whatnot. Like, do you, honey? Do you? I'm not here to judge you. But yeah, really exciting stuff. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, and just let me know in the comments, how did your painting goals go this year? Did you have any specific ones? Did you meet them? What does that look like? I know I didn't have any like real specific goals at the beginning of the year. In uh, the new year though, I am creating specific goals that I wanna like circle back to at the end of 2024. But yeah, I'd be curious to know how your panning year went and all that stuff. But, yeah, I will let you guys go now. I think I've done quite enough rambling. And yeah, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.